In this video, we're gonna make an isometric dungeon map. All right. Okay, I wanna start off by saying I hope all of you out there are doing okay. You're at home dealing with all this craziness as best you can. My wife, JC, and I have been isolated for over two weeks now, and we're doing okay, you know, just trying to keep working as much as possible. Uh, stay sane, lots of animal crossing and cooking and all of that. So I wanted to make this video for two reasons. One, like all my other videos, you know, I want this to be helpful and encouraging to you to make your own maps and stuff for your D&D or tabletop RPG. And second is my in-person game obviously is not going to continue in person at least for a little bit so we are going to try out moving it online so i'm going to be giving roll 20 a try uh, i've played in games on there before but i've never run a game and a big part of me wanting to try out roll 20 is so we can continue this the sort of tactical moving miniatures around in battle part of the game which is a big part of my home game. You know, I've made miniatures for all of the monsters that the players have fought along their adventure, and I want to continue that, so I'm going to give Roll20 a try. So I need a battle map for their upcoming session. The players are on their way to negotiate with a lich, so they are infiltrating his lair. It's going to be a real interesting encounter. Hopefully they don't decide to fight him because he is a tough dude. So yeah, isometric battle map. I thought instead of just doing another overhead flat battle map, that this time I would try this isometric map. Okay, so what is an isometric map exactly? If you're familiar with games like Diablo, that is considered an isometric map, your, your little person is walking around on an isometric map. It's basically a grid that has been rotated and tilted on its side. So it's still a symmetrical grid, but it gives this sort of fake perspective. So I have created an isometric grid template that I'm gonna be using for this map, but I'm making it available free for you to use. It is the first link down in the description. So I made this template in Illustrator by rotating a grid 30 degrees and then skewing it back the other way 30 degrees. So it's, it's a 30 degree isometric map. If that's not the angle you're looking for, uh, there are tons of tutorials out there on how to create your own isometric grid, or uh, there's probably tons of other templates that you can download as well. All right, let's start making this map. Like every other project I do, I gotta go step by step, and the first step, 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 <laughs> the first step is to plan out the dungeon. I guess you could just wing it and start drawing, but because I have story stuff in mind for my players, I gotta plan it out. So I just made a simple list of all the rooms that are gonna be in this dungeon, this lich's lair. I did a very quick flat overhead layout of what I think the dungeon should look like, and then just a few little sketches of some things that are gonna be inside the map, like this manticore statue and these necrotic trees and stuff. Now that the planning's done, it's time to bust out the template and start penciling in the map. Okay, so I'm just using my mechanical pencil to rough out the map. This is basically just like drawing a flat top-down dungeon, but on an angle. So think of the lines that I'm making here as the point where the walls meet the floors, I guess. And as I'm going, you know, places where there's doors or stairs or you know this manticore statue there's this pit i am sketching those in in a more three-dimensional perspective it's a little tricky but if you remember that things that should go vertically still go straight up and down so like the sides of the doors are going straight up and down that really helps figure out the drawing. Hopefully the drawing is explaining how to do this because I'm not doing the best job. The main thing is starting in pencil so you can experiment and get the feel for this change in perspective with the isometric map. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, once I am done penciling, I have the map all figured out, now it's time to ink it and make it look super cool. So for this project, I'm using a Papermate flare size medium. This is a pretty cool felt tip pen. Uh, it, it bleeds a little bit on the paper I'm using. I'm, I'm, I just printed out the template on regular copy paper. It bleeds a little bit, but it's not enough for me to worry about. This pen is nice because it has a tapered tip, so you can kind of hold it very upright and make thin lines, or you can hold it at an angle, press down a little bit harder to get thicker lines. It's like a very, very small, weak brush tip pen. So yeah, again, like normal top-down maps, any places where there's walls, I'm doubling up the line weight, making them thicker. The grid on the ground is thinner, just to sort of give some differentiation in line weight and, you know, make everything feel contained and be super clear. So I'm not as worried about making things look awesome and crazy detailed as I am making it very clear because this map is going to be in the background and its real purpose is to just indicate what these rooms of this lich layer are, not necessarily be fully representational of everything that's inside of them and all the little details that I'm just going to be explaining as a dungeon master anyway. So yeah, my players are going to talk with this lich. So I am heavily adapting uh, an old third edition, or maybe 3.5 edition adventure module called the Red Hand of Doom. We started with the Lost Minds of Fandelver and then moved into this Red Hand of Doom campaign. So basically they are trying to save this area of the world from an invading goblin army and they're going to talk to this lich who has agreed to help the goblin army and they're trying to get him to to stop helping the goblins and start helping them or at least just stop helping the goblins <laughs> i don't want to get too much more into the story because i don't want to spoil it for my players but if you're interested in seeing how i think about dungeon design there's a card popping up right now go check out my video about designing a one-page dungeon i go super in detail about not just creating the map but also how to think about designing compelling dungeons Okay, so I'm drawing this. I'm adding the grid pretty much everywhere on the floor, but I'm I'm being real sketchy with it because this is a lich's lair. It's it's supposed to be run down and creepy, so it's not it's not a perfect grid. You know, it's all chunky and there's little pieces of rocks and cracks and stuff everywhere. I should say that the reason I am super psyched on creating this isometric map on trying this this out instead of just a flat dungeon map is because one of my favorite RPG artists on Instagram, their name is Skull Fungus. I'll put their link in the description below as well. They make killer, totally awesome, way better than this isometric maps. They pop up every once in a while in my feed and I just I just love the way they look. And I've been meaning to try out this style of map and you know, having to play online is a great excuse. I'm not drawing this dungeon out on a on our big battle map that we spread out on the table. You know, I'm, I'm obviously doing it much smaller and we can zoom in and blow it up on roll 20. So I just thought this was a perfect excuse to try out the isometric map. And I should also say, you know, I'm, I'm going to be trying out Roll20, see how it goes. Let me know if you use Roll20, you know, Fantasy Grounds or some other online way of playing. My other game, I just use Discord and we do like Theater of the Mind. There's not tactical battle maps and all that, so Discord is fine. But I guess what I'm trying to say <laughs> is that, you know, right now we're not able to get together and use paper miniatures and print out maps and stuff. So if you would like for me to adapt my miniatures or maps or something to run in Roll20 or some, some other program, let me know in the comments below. Right now, I don't know what that takes, what sort of uh, effort goes into creating something like that, but if enough people are interested, I will 100% look into it. And I'm, I'm kind of testing it out here 
anyway with this upcoming session. So, And the last thing I'm doing is adding some vertical lines, like kind of on the corners and along the outside edges, just to sort of give this illusion of walls. Just another element to help the clarity of this tilted perspective isometric map. And that's it. The isometric map is complete. Now I'm going to scan it into the computer, clean it up a little bit, and try my hand at importing it into Roll20, getting everything ready for our first online session coming up here in a few days. It's been a minute since my friends and I have been able to play, and this is a great excuse to try out one of these online tools for running D&D or any other tabletop role-playing game. Things are really tough right now and being able to get online and play games with your friends is just one of those really important things to do. Keep, keep yourself sane, keep things positive. Hopefully you will print out the isometric template and give it a shot. Um, even if you don't use it in a game, just to plan out your own dungeon or use it to make a map for whatever. If you use the template, I would really love to see what you create. Hit me up on social media. Links are in the description. And if you don't follow me on social media, you definitely should. I'll be posting on there letting you know how this whole Roll20 thing goes. And yeah, I post a bunch of other cool stuff, journal comic about my life, fun drawings, some skateboarding clips every once in a while. I've been skateboarding in my garage. It's actually been really awesome. <laughs> Trying to learn those kickflips, get those kickflips down. Anyway, thank you so much for checking out this video. I hope you're hanging in there, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya!